living in a tough world. A lot of things going on every day, something different. Uh, every day is something else that we get to do. Uh, the sanity, if you allow it to, becomes discouraged if you just look at the world and think that that's it and that's all that there is. Uh, it will cause you to want to just throw your hands up and surrender sometime. But I stopped by this morning to let you know that this, this is not all it is. This, this is just a journey, amen. For those who are children of God, we are on a pilgrimage, amen. This is a uh, We're just passing through. You sing that song, this world is not my home. Uh, and I believe that. So I don't believe in investing a lot into something that's not a permanent structure, amen. Uh, do what you got to do with it and get on through here, amen. Uh, anticipation and hope of the heaven to come. And sometimes we get uh, frustrated and we even believe maybe that we're only losing sight of uh, what's right, amen. Uh, look at this brother Kerry mentioned up is down and down is up and right is wrong and wrong is right. And world wants to throw things at you and challenge your beliefs and based upon what you believe, based upon God's word, the world wants to challenge those things and sometimes you just get tired and want to just quit. But I tell you, that's not it. That's not an answer, amen. Yeah. When it comes to uh, being faithful and true to the Lord, the answer is never to give up. Uh, keep in mind that we are overcomers, amen. Right. That means that you have overcome some things in your life. God has brought you through. And I believe that he will continue to uh, have you in that category of those who are overcomers, those who uh, got to the other side of the issue, those who have gotten to the other side of uh, the, the fun side, amen, of something that may have been troubling them. And John reminds us of this in 1 John chapter 4 for just a few minutes this morning. Uh, for just a few minutes this morning, I'm not going to a water drink or I'm preaching or anything like that. And I decided to go ahead and drink a bottle of water this morning, this is one time there ain't nothing in there. <laughs> Trying to tell something. First John chapter four, verse number four and five says, "Ye are uh, of God." John says, "The children and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world." He says, they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world hear them. If you go back up to verse number one, John is encouraging uh, his listeners. He says in 1 John chapter 4, verse number one, he says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Uh. That alludes to what I was speaking about earlier. You see all this stuff, you've been bored about all of this stuff, and you know. Where's it coming from? It's not coming from God, amen. Oh, uh, and he says, test them, try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. He says, hereby, verse 2, know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is of God. And every spirit, verse 3 says, that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, or uh, against Christ. Whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now it's already in the world. And then in verse 4 he says, But you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Hmm. And have overcome them, he says, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world hear of them. You can just take verse 4 and rest assured, be confident to know that as a child of God, you are on the winning team. You are in the right place. He says, you have overcome the world, and then he says in verse 4, because greater, greater, is he that is in you. Amen? Right. It's good to know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. 
He says, they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. But you, on the other hand, John says once again, you are of God. He that know God heareth us, he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. But just a few minutes this morning, I want you to encourage us and remind us of the importance of knowing and believing that you are an overcomer. If you have put advice on in baptism, if you are living your life faithful, as Jesus said in Revelation 2.10, be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give you a crown of life. If you uh, have put advice on in baptism, and you are living your life faithfully in Christ, you, in that state, are an overcomer. I did it and I believe that once an overcomer, you can always be an overcomer. If you have made that decision, because that's why it holds up so many people, and it's going to be the downfall of so many people, men won't make the decision to obey the gospel of Christ first and foremost. And then sadly, when many obey some who obey the gospel of Christ, they won't stay faithful and true. But once you obey the gospel of Christ, and you have you have become and overcome. I thought initially about to say becoming an overcomer and staying an overcomer. But you have to become an overcomer first. And then it's important that you know that you have to stay in that in that in that state. <clears throat> you can't be in and out, in and out, in and out. You have to stay true and faithful to God. Becoming an overcomer takes a conscious decision. It, it involves a conscious decision that you no longer want to be just in the world. You don't want to just be just part of the world. And I know we're in the world, we're not we're of the world. But once you make that decision to be uh, become a child of God, you're saying, I am now an overcomer, but more importantly, or equally as important, is to stay in that state. Right. Jesus says, be thou faithful unto that. We got faith unto death. That means we are required to stay faithful. We are required to stay true. And as long as we are faithful, then we fall under the class of individuals who are overcomers. Now many, sadly, will obey the gospel. And they have to turn back to the world. Now many, sadly, maybe will never even convert throughout the process. But once you become converted, once you obey the gospel and you truly believe what you have done is right according to God's word, you want to be willing to do it. I need some fans on the other people. God's mother said, you should get some at this point. Y'all think I'll be comfortable. I do it. I tell them all the time in the car driving. The driver got to be comfortable. Everybody else be riding along, baby. Y'all take care of the driver. I'm driving right now. It's important that we stay on the compass, amen. And there are so many things that you and I can overcome through the help of our Savior. Philippians 4.17. Philippians 4.17. Oh, 
seen the uh, all this rainbow stuff going on for the whole month of uh, uh, June. That's been shut down in Jones, basically. Don't buy it too. Because if you buy it today, you're going to buy it to murder this month, child molesters month, liars month, thieves month. You might buy it all those other months away, man. But you overcome evil with good. Don't let evil overcome you. You overcome evil with good. And how do you do that? By not being a willing participant, amen. amen. Not falling up under that, submissive to it, not being, uh, you love people. We gotta love people, we gotta love souls. That's right. mm -hmm. but you can't grab on to sin and hold on to sin right. to the point that you start taking part in sin. Can't allow that to happen. That's when evil overcomes you. Mm -hmm. We have to overcome evil with good by taking time to teach and to pray for and to encourage someone that, no, oh, hey, everybody has to deal with sin. If I can't live my sin up and set my sin apart and say, now, you got to accept my sin, you got to stand up for my sin, you got to promote my That's sin. Right. That's right. You can't do that. You cannot overcome evil by becoming a part of it. You overcome evil with good. By showing this is what Christ was about. Christ was about forgiveness. Forgiveness. He's forgiven me of my sin. And he will forgive you of your sin. Overcome evil with good. But Paul says, be not overcome of evil. So that's one thing that you can hold on to. Once you have become an overcomer, obey the gospel of Christ, you can overcome evil with good. And this good emanates from the Lord through us. We are vessels. Amen? We are vessels for doing God's work. We're not to be a part of what's hateful in mean spirit. But we have to show love. Amen? And compassion. But at the same time, we don't give in to evil. And there's a lot of evil around this bench that's been shoved down our throats every day. Our children have been attacked, our family have been attacked. Everything that, that's good, clean, and wholesome has been attacked. And we've got to stand up against it, amen. amen. So he said, overcome evil with good on the square 21. We can overcome self. And a lot of stuff we deal with goes right back to what? Self. How do we overcome self? By denying self. See, yeah, this is pleasure, this feel good, but this is supposed to feel good. Don't mean it's right. This is supposed to look good. Don't mean it's right. We have to be willing to deny self. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Matthew 16, verse 24. Uh, Jesus said it this way, Matthew 16, verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come out of me, let him deny who? Himself. And brothers, sisters, that's hard. Especially when we live in a me, myself, and I world. But remember, just because you live in the world, as a child of God, you are not of the world. Paul said in Romans chapter 12, don't be conformed to this world. We have to learn to deny self. Jesus says, if any man will come out of me, let him do what? Deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. That cross is seen as a burden. Now here's what you can do with a burden. You can stay burned down by it, or you can make a choice to pick it up and go along with Jesus. And you go along with Jesus long enough, that's what you can do with that cross out the Bible. You want to toss it to the side. Because, see, I, I don't need this burden anymore. I got the strength now to be able to get rid of it. I don't have to, let, I don't have to be beholden to this burden. Whatever it is been holding me back in life, whatever it is that's, that's been crushing me, whatever this weight and sin is that's been holding me down, holding me back, I don't just have to hold on to that anymore. So Jesus says, hey, you know what? I know you're strong. Come on. Bring it along. Because along the way, you know they say, life. Lord, to some, God will lighten your heavy load. That's what it's talking about. Mm -hmm. Lighten your heavy load. Yeah. Don't just 
just stop and be burned down by it. Pick it up. And out of the Bible, that's what you want to do. You want to set it to the side. And when you set things to the side that are part of you, you see, you see yourself setting self aside. You see yourself denying self. So many of us, Lord help us, want to be in trouble because we don't want to put self to the side. Why? Because in the world, everything's about me, myself, and I. Some folks do nothing to help anybody else because it's all about how inconvenient am I going to be? What's it going to cost me? Imagine if Jesus would have had the same attitude. Mm. Yeah, I know that he can say, but what is it going to cost me? What price am I going to have to pay? I don't think that ever came up in this thought process. He said, I came to seek and save that. Talk about me, which was lost. I gave my life a ransom for men. He said, those that are sick need not a position. I mean, those that are well need not a position. But those, he said, some sick folk out there. He said, I'm willing to go in and amongst them, to be a part of them, in order to be able to help them along the way. And if Jesus is willing to do that, what should I be willing to do? Deny myself. When I learn to deny myself, I can overcome some things. And I know it's hard to deny to yourself. It's hard to admit when I'm wrong. That's hard to admit when you're wrong. But guess what? It'll save your soul. It'll save your soul. And that's chapter. Uh, I think 19 of those, those some disciples running around thinking they were saved. Hmm. And somebody came along and said, you know, have you seen the Holy Ghost since you were baptized? They said, we haven't even heard of the yeah, Holy Ghost. And they said, I don't know what you baptized. They said, John's baptism. And then they showed the gospel. You know what those people did? They could have just held on to self and said, hey, we're good. I understand what you said, but we're good. But you know what they did? They were baptized again. They're willing to deny self. They're willing to admit that, hey, maybe we didn't have the full story. We have to be willing to deny ourselves. Jesus says, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Overcomers will learn how to deny themselves. It takes a walk of faith. It's like chapter 5, verse 7. It takes having a walk of faith, a walk of walk of faith. Second Corinthians 5, verse 7. Second Corinthians 5, verse 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. You can learn to overcome the world. You can overcome the world, excuse me, when you learn to walk by faith. When you learn to walk by faith. You can overcome the world. You can be come and overcome. Amen. You learn to walk by faith. Think about it in your life as a Christian. Besides the initial faith walk. Because it took a faith walk to initially become a child of God, right? Because somebody said, go into the water, you come take the blood, you see the blood in the water. Let's see how going to the water could take away your sins. All this stuff came by faith. So you have walked by faith before and not by sight. But it's important that you keep walking that same walk. Every day becomes a walk of faith. Not by what I can see. I'm walking by what I believe that God will do. And what is your faith upon? Faith come by hearing? Hearing by the word of God? I read God's word where he's brought individuals through different things over and over through situations where it seemed impossible that they were able to overcome. But God over and over has brought them through. That's faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And because of that, I can walk by faith. And sometimes we see no way that the situation this calls come out in our favor. But then Paul says, if God be for us, we will be against us. Doesn't matter what the who, the what, when, what, how, why it is. But if God is for you, who can be against you? And that requires a daily walk of faith. Every day, we have to walk by faith and 
and not by sight. But Bishop, I understand what you're saying. But sometimes my mind is holding me back. Sometimes my mind is so full of, of things, bad thoughts. Uh, well, what would I do in a situation like that? How do I overcome? In Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 through 9, watch this. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 through 9. Paul says, you know what, brothers? I understand how you ever just sit there, your mind is clear, you think about something good, and all of a sudden something just pops up, you're like, oh, where did that come from? That happens. Satan is so busy that you can be in the middle of a prayer and something crazy will come to your mind. Yeah. You're like, well, I got to this all over. Where did that come from? God, forgive me. But Paul says, there's a way to deal with that. There's a way to overcome those bad thoughts that sometimes enter our mind. In Philippians chapter uh, 4, verse 8, he says, finally, brother, he says, what sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are a good report? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Man, God's word is so comforting. So when you're having a hard time, and your mind seems to be cluttered with things, God's word. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Yet you are walking through the valley of the sound of death. I will feel no evil. I can do all things through Christ who is fit. There's a whole bunch more than that, God. There's so much in God's word that we can think about to clear bad thoughts from our minds. Amen. And that's, and that's if we need help these days. Anybody else just watch old TV shows? Huh? That's the only thing you can watch without something crazy popping up on you. Amen. And then still, the commercial pop up and throw something to throw a wrench at you. Sitting there just minding your own business and here comes the devil. But if we just take those times and when the devil throws it at us, we resist it. Stop and pray, amen. Stop and pray. Jesus said, pray that you enter not into temptation. You ever think about that? There's something that's really troubling me. <laughs> and, and, and I'm getting weak. I ain't sinned yet. But that thought is there. That temptation is there. I am being tested. I am being challenged. Jesus says, pray that you enter not. It's just stop it. It's pray. So overcoming bad thoughts by thinking on pure things. Paul gives us a list of things that we can think about by way of the overall category, but those things are found within God's word. They're found in the scripture. What about death? Do you feel death? Do you have a constant fear of uh, death? I do want to pray again. It's got to have an emergency death, amen. Because we all have an appointment. Don't walk around thinking that, you know, you're not going to die unless Jesus comes back first. Comes back first. But we all want to die, right? Let's use those type of words. So I'm not trying to say don't think about that. Be aware of that. But as a child of God, don't fear that. A child of God has no reason to walk around fearful of death. We can overcome the fear of death by thinking about the certainty of the resurrection. Because death is going to ultimately involve a resurrection. So you can spend time being overcome of fear of death, or you can be aware of death and live your life, amen, as a child of God, with the certainty of a resurrection. Now what's more important, the death or the resurrection? He said, the point of man wants to die. So it's going to happen. 
But you know what sometimes is always going to happen? The resurrection. It's going to happen. And the certainty of the resurrection being center and foremost in your mind, I believe that would have to overcome the fear of death. Why? Because you're an overcomer. You've overcome so many things in your life as a child of God. In uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, let's see, 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 24. 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 24. Watch this. First Corinthians 15, 54 says, So this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then it shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Watch this, he says. <laughs> Paul almost like he's taunting, like, like, like he's taunting death here. Huh? He says, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Hmm? Oh, death, where is thy sting? Then he says, What? Oh, great! Where is thy victory? He says, uh, The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, what? Which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Never thought you'd be able to turn that, huh? That's Hey, poke the stick at you. Hey, Dad. Why? Because we are so fearful sometimes of death. But we can overcome that. Why? Because we are overcomers. Don't need to fear that. Unless you're not grateful to the Lord, then that's something to think about. But be aware of that. But also understand that there is a resurrection. There is a resurrection. And this is going to involve everybody. This is death will involve everybody. The resurrection will involve everybody. There's a resurrection to life, and there's a resurrection to damnation. But if you are an overcomer, then you can say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. How about overcome sin? Deal with that a lot, that's our biggest problem, right? See? If you take away everything else that we deal with in life, the biggest problem that we really have is sin. It's not high gas prices, okay? That's a problem, that's an issue. High food prices is an issue. All the things that have been thrown at us from all walks of the world, all that's an issue. But when it comes down to us individually, in our life, Sin. Because that's the only thing that Jesus says if you die entangled in it. He says if you die in your sin, why am you cannot come? He said anything about you die paying seven dollars for a gallon of gas. If you die paying you triple what your food was a year ago or whatever, none of that. He says if you die in your sin, that stands true today. This is true as it was when he said it. If you die in your sin. So that's the challenge that you and I face. Mm -hmm. But there was a perfect sacrifice for our sins. Hebrews 5 9. Hebrews 5 9. A perfect sacrifice for our sins. Hebrews 5 9. Verse 8 says, Though he were his son, Yet not here be this by the things we suffer. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. How do we overcome sin? Through Christ. The perfect sacrifice for sin. He overcame death. Through Christ, we can overcome death. Through Christ, we can overcome sin. Being an overcomer, becoming an overcomer, it all starts with being baptized into Christ. What about your hidden prejudices? Some people don't like because of the height, the weight, the color, where they live, 
where they went to school, where they drive, whatever the case may be. How about overcoming all that foolishness? You do all that through Christ, amen. amen. You can overcome all of those preconceived ideas and thoughts about people by being in Christ and living according to what the Lord says. Galatians 16 says, We are to do good unto all men. Especially those of the household of faith. So you're supposed to treat everybody right, amen. You're supposed to be supposed to do good. It's, it's in your power. You're supposed to do good. God called me to overcome all of these things by being in Christ. What about pride? Luke <coughs> chapter 2. Anybody need to overcome pride this morning? Yeah. All right, so. I ain't got no pride. <laughs> Correct. Never had pride. Your ability won't let you say how much you've overcome pride. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. Overcoming pride. Paul said, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, 5. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God, thought it not proper to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men. And been found in the fashion of a man, he hung himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. You talking about taking some humility to come down from heaven to bless my own job? Amen. Jesus did. Imagine you sitting around heaven. And now you're going to give that up to come down to earth. To mess around with men. Look at how they treat each other. You think they would accept me? They treat each other that way? Jesus came down and he died for you and I. And it says in verse 9, wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, things in heaven, things in earth, and things on earth. But he left heaven to come here. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, to the Lord of God the Father. He says, What for my beloved as you have always made, not as my brother only, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trouble. We have become overcomers. It all started with obeying the gospel of Christ. That's all I'm saying. Don't be a defeatist. Don't just give up. Don't throw your hands up. And I know, brother, this you know it gets tough sometimes. Life gets tough, but this is just, you just pass it through. It's just on the journey. You go on a trip, you just make the best of it. If things not going well, you just say, just make the best of it. It's kind of like life. Make the best of it. But what are you really? Ultimately, you're trying to get back home, right? Ultimately, you're trying to get back home. And ultimately, you and I are trying to get home. We're just trying to get home. And on the way, you're going to encounter some difficulties. Don't give up. Recognize that you are an overcomer. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we lose. How many of y'all look at your 401ks lately? <laughs> That's the question, huh? Are your IRAs and stuff? That's the question. Y'all look at those. Mm -hmm. Worldly investments, y'all. We overcome worldly loss. Know how? By investing in heaven. You can overcome all your world losses by investing in heaven. So you invest a thousand dollars in something and the day is worth a dollar. That's not all there is about life. That's a worldly investment. But think about the investment you made in your soul and the ultimate payoff for that investment. You overcome worldly loss by investing in heavenly gain. Amen. Matthew 6, 19 through 21. 
And then the last thing is I close. We can overcome sorrow by counting all things joy. James chapter 1. I told all of you to read through James chapter 1, right? Hmm. Y'all talk about uh, taking those things that are coming to your mind sometimes and replacing them with good things. James chapter 1. Verse number one says, James, the servant of God, and of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the twelve tribes which are scattered of God's readings. And keep in mind, James write this letter to God's people. They scattered, man. Things are, things are rough in the church, amen. People have been persecuted and all these things going on. I mean, they got scattered out there everywhere. But what does James say to them? My brother, in the midst of this, just like Paul writing, uh, the Philippian letter, and this is what he was going through in jail, incarcerated, and then he was encouraging. Well, James, similarly, is writing this letter to God's people, where God's people are scattered. Times are tough. But he says to them, in spite of all of this, count it all joy, we fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this is the trial of your faith, work of patience. And I believe that you, you step up another level in your Christian life, in your Christian growth. You step up to another level once you learn how to look at trials and temptations. Once you learn how to look at those tests that come your way in life, and you understand that, their purpose, you step up a little bit closer to God. Because you understand that they are for your benefit. They are for the purpose of working on your patience. What about my patience? It's teaching me that I need to learn to wait on God. That's what trials are about. Teaching me to learn how to wait on God and watch Him bring me through as He's done. Mm -hmm. And to reassure me, I can go back and read his word, word because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I can go back and read about all those individuals and lives he touched, the things they were going through, mm -hmm. and how God ultimately brought them through. Mm -hmm. Overcoming. John says, he that is greater that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. So listen, if you are in the world, or you got one foot in the world, sometimes you try to keep that one foot over there just in case. I'm going to hang around the church of Christ just in case. But on the other hand, I got to keep that other foot grounded in the world just in case because I'm not really converted. Keep in mind that John says, he that is in you is greater. What more convincing do you need? What more, what other level of convincing do you need that you recognize that he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world? Jesus is always the victory. Mm -hmm. Always. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe, Brother Bishop, turn to the end of the book. Turn to the end of the book. It's there. It allows you to look at death and say, that what you're saying, great what you're doing. That's what we have to overcome with us. It allows you to overcome your prejudices. It allows you to overcome uh, world and loss. It allows you to overcome any and everything that comes your way by recognizing that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When you get that, <coughs> when we understand that fully, it's going to make such a difference in our lives as children of God. Mm -hmm. People will think they're crazy. People who think they're crazy, don't let them bother you. Mm -hmm. It's not that it don't bother you, it's just that you know it's just stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just a challenge. It's just a situation. It's just an obstacle. I go up and down doing whatever the case may be. God will split it for you if he needs to be split. If God needs to take you over, he'll take you over. He'll take you under. He'll take you around. He will take you through it. Mm -hmm. You don't believe it, try. 
Amen. Amen. What about no problems and issues? Mm -mm. Every day is a challenge. But my God, he's awesome. Do we live like he's awesome? Mm -hmm. Do we live like we believe he's awesome? Mm -hmm. Think about it. God's not the problem. So just maybe the hindrance to us being overcomers is us. Maybe just maybe it's us. Because we have not fully understood what John says about overcoming. And John says in 1 John 4, verse 4 5, he that is in you is greater. 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 He's better. He's bigger. Can I say bad? <laughs> he's tougher. He's rougher than he that is in the world. I guess I should say bad. He's better. Amen. Talk about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Let us think in. It's yours, take what you do what you choose. But if you're not an overcomer, you need to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ first. That's going to put you on the path of others who are overcomers. And then as you're traveling this life and traveling this path called life, one of this world called life, you're going to run up some things. It's not naive to say you're not. You're going to run into some things. You're going to run into some real challenges and issues. Sometimes day after day after day after day. To the point you're saying, man, when is it going to stop? When God says stop. But in the meantime, He's allowed you to overcome. You're allowed to overcome again. You're allowed to overcome this. You're allowed to overcome that. You're allowed to overcome every challenge that comes your way. Because he is God and you are his child. And I'm letting my children suffer sometimes. They don't let other people suffer. Because sooner or later they won't get the message. Sooner or later they won't get the message. They'll like, okay, now, you can come back in the house. And then you act like that's a decision to come back in the house now. That's what God does well sometimes. When we start like we have some sense, I go back in the house. I know a lot of us were growing up. Mom, dad, got mad to pitch out the house for a minute. So you start like we have some sense. I come go back there, boy. Go in and get something to eat. That's what God does with us. But we are overcomers. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And if you're not a child of God, you ought to become one. I can't wait to become one. You become a child of God by simply obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus did all the hard work for you. Jesus left the beauties of heaven, came down and walked on this earth, was mistreated from day one when he started ministering. People just started losing their minds. For the first 30 years, read about Jesus, I guess they were pretty good. But when he started preaching, people started going crazy. To the extent that, like ravenous wolves and mad dogs, they were all and crucify him. Crucify him. This man, three years earlier, they hadn't even heard of. And now they had so much hate for him, they said, Crucify him, let a known seditionist, a known thief, a known murderer, so Barabbas, let him go, but kill this man here. That three years later, they didn't know who he was. Three years earlier, they didn't know who he was. But now they give us so much hate and animosity, they're talking about crucify him. He came down and dealt with that. Why? Because he knew what he had to do in order to save us. And he went through it, y'all. He lost his life on that bloody cross. They took his life and spotted down and buried him in the grave and the third day he got up. That's the gospel of Christ. That's the good news for us. That's the message to say. So you go and tell the story. You just go and tell the story. Go and preach. To all nations. Preach what? Death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm. And when one hears that story, it ought to affect them. It should have caused kind of curiosity to kick in. To tell them more. But when you hear about that story, it should cause you to uh, have a change of mind. Don't you believe it? Your mind should change. That's called repentance. That's recognizing what sin is and that you don't want to That's what we're saying. And then have people willing to confess with your mouth and believe Jesus Christ this is the Son of God. Then have your sins washed away in water buried baptism. When you go into that water buried baptism, you're going in by faith, and man, some things start to happen. 
You contact the blood of Christ. Now you feel the absolute good country towards God. Reconciliation begins. You don't want to serve the sin, become a servant of righteousness. Old man is crucified. Uh, operation takes place. You receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord takes that baptized believer and adds them to the body of Christ, to the church of Christ. It's his bride, it's his wife. And you want to overcome? You don't have to be there. You're not going to overcome anything outside of the church of Christ. Outside of the Lord, you're not going to overcome. It's not possible to overcome anything except that apart from Christ. I want to be an overcomer. Because I want to hear it one day say, well done, not good, and make you serve. That's what he says. Be faithful about the death. I'll give you a crown of life. If you hear this morning, you're not a child of God. The invitation is for you. You're a child of God. You need to pray for yourself. You need to come back home. It's the best time. May I even say maybe the only time? What about this may be the last time? We just don't know. But what we do have is right now. And this invitation is for you. To become a child of God, come back home. Right now, as we stand singing the song of the curtain. We have the fountain.